Today I'll speak about TDD with, in React, with React. So my name is Yui. Um, I currently work in Accenture in the data analytics and API development team. So we do build a lot of POCs and uh, about a few months ago and then we started playing with React. Previously we were a lot on Angular. So then we thought of like how do we do testing and that's why today I decided to uh, share about TDD with React. And I think if you go online and search like uh, t testing with React, it's, there are quite a lot of resources, but it's all a bit scattered. And that's why I compiled this and just for sharing purposes. Uh, so can I have a show of hands like who is uh, familiar with TDD here? Okay, not many. So <laughs> okay, so TDD means uh, test driven development. Oops. Nice display pick. Display pick? Why? Um, so essentially, it means you write your test before you even write your production code, before you even write any code. So the cycle is to have red green refactor. So when you write a test, make sure that it fails, and then go back to write the enough amount of code to make your uh, test pass and then go back and refactor your code. Yeah. So it's this cycle. Read to make sure your test fail and green make sure to write the sufficient code to make your test pass and then refactor your, your code. Uh, I think there's this. Yeah. So this is the one, the writing on test, then run your test, make sure it fails, and write your code and then run, write your code and then make sure that it passed and then, yeah, the whole cycle carry on. So, um, why TDD? There are actually a lot of people uh, who really advocates about TDD because uh, if you are following the right procedure of TDD, you are essentially writing a lot more tests and it allows you to focus more because you are only writing sufficient code to make your test pass. So you are only focusing on writing that sufficient code and not wondering about some other things else. And then tidier code, if you really care about object-oriented programming, so there's like encapsulation. So you only care about the public methods and not the private methods because uh, you should only assess the, the class via the public methods. And because you are writing TDD, and then you write a lot more tests, and you write a lot more tests, then it makes sure that you're, you have fewer bugs, and the tests are essentially like a documentation with examples of how you assess your code. So there are some rules and principles in TDD. So one of it is uh, you should not write production code until you have written a a failing test, which I shared earlier, and you may not write more of a test than is sufficient to fail. So when you have your first assertion, uh, when you write your aspect, the function output that equals to that, then you should run your test and make sure if it, it fails. So typically what you do, the workflow is you have a test runner to watch your test. So whatever, whenever you click save onto your test, then you will, it will just alert you that this thing is failing. And you may not write more production code than is sufficient to, um, to pass the current failing test. Yep. So the test should be fast, uh, meaning that if you were to make any asynchronous call, you should actually mock it rather than to make the actual call so that you don't um, you don't always make the API calls and whenever you test, then, then it will actually cost you money. Then if you mock it, you actually mock it with uh, the expected replies from the API. It should be independent. So your first test, your second test should not be, independent, should not be dependent on your first test. It should run separately. Yeah. And repeatable meaning that uh, uh, if you run on Mac OS, then you should be able to easily run on, on Windows. Yeah. Self-validating, meaning that it should be, when you run a test, you will know exactly whether it's fail or pass. It should not be like a 
uh, after you run your test, you have to manually go and check that it's, it's not the output that you want. So when you run a test, it will tell you, oh, this thing is failing, this thing is passing. Yeah. And timely, in, in TDD aspect, it means that you should always write your tests before you write your code. So that, in, in a sense, means you, the time factor is important. Um, so these are the, some of the tools typically in React. So we have here uh, on this one, it's Enzyme. It's written by Airbnb. So that's, that's like a test you choose, meaning um, af after you use Jest. So we, uh, we typically use Jest or Mocha for testing in, in React. So J these are the test runner. So after you have Jest set up as a test runner, then you use Enzyme to then interact with the DOM components to find your, uh, like, en Enzyme works quite similar to jQuery. So you can dot find and then your component, your class name. Yeah. Uh, actually, there's also the React test utils, but React themselves also, Facebook also shared that we should use Enzyme instead because it's, it's a lot easier. So this one I mentioned, Mocha, just Karma is another test runner, and we have another called AVA, which I didn't really play on it. Then the assertion, typically you use Chai, and for mocking, you have uh, sign on. I'm not too sure I'm pronouncing right, but yeah, so you can do spy uh, stops and mock functions. And for as testing uh, asynchronous calls, then you can use knock or fetch mock. Yep. So today, I just walk through a simple uh, workflow of how you write, t how you, uh, of the TDD workflow. Yeah, so it's this uh, application. So basically what it does is you, it will, you have this uh, wallet balance, and this one is where you type, where you deposit money into your wallet or withdraw money from your wallet. So this is the, the Bitcoin balance. Um, this is done via an API call calling to CoinDesk, and it gets the real, not exactly real time. Um, so whenever you, whenever the component mounts, and then it get, makes an API call and get this number. So whatever your number, um, actually, yeah. Yeah, the number in your wallet, then you will make the calculation on how much Bitcoin can you buy with the no amount of money you have in your wallet. So what, what I'll do today is uh, to demonstrate how, how to write this, this wallet component in TDD manner. <coughs> so it's the wallet component. So some of the requirements that it has is to have a state of the wallet balance. And because uh, we are using, I'm using Redux to actually dispatch the action to make the API call. So it needs to be connected and the withdraw and deposit buttons, which, which is also connected to Redux. Uh, am I losing anyone? Any questions here? OK, cool. So these are some of the things that I'll cover today. Uh, so first, typically, what you will do is you will test that the component actually renders properly. So you can do that using just snapshots. So snapshots, what it means exactly really is to take a picture of it and um, then whenever you make any update to that, uh, to, to, the, to the code, and then it will alert you saying that, oh, is this, the, is this the change that you want? If that is the change that you want, then you will press U and then it updates again. Then testing the DOM components, like test the, the component, the class actually exists on the UI. So this one we'll use the enzyme shallow render sh shallow rendering and which uh, just now I mentioned the find API, which is very similar to jQuery. Uh, testing the state, uh, React, then you have your state or props. So this one we test like whether that's the, the state is what we expected. Um, clicks, which comes under the withdraw and deposit buttons. So this one we'll use just mock functions. So when you put when you, uh, you put your JS mock functions into that component and you assert, you expect it to be called when you simulate the click. 
and testing the asynchronous actions, which we will use fetch mock. So first, uh, we'll just simply test like this component uh, really renders. Um, so yeah, over here you can see that uh, we just do a shallow rendering. So what shallow rendering does is it, it takes the it takes this wallet component and it renders without the chow components. So let's say wallet itself has another React component called uh, coins. So coins is another React component, but uh, shallow rendering won't render the chow component. It will just it will just put into the snapshot chow uh, coin. Yeah. And so here it, it says that um, the wallet, the wallet is, so this is typically how you write a jest, uh, uh, jest test, yeah, a, te a test in jest. So you describe, this is the describe block, and here you set up the props, and then I put the props into the wallet, and then um, here it says it should properly renders, and I expect that the wallet to match snapshot. So now, uh, obviously you also have to import the wallet, but the wallet doesn't exist now. So you obviously return me uh, an error. So over here it says that um, you likely forgot to export your component for a file you defined in. So obviously this will happen because I haven't even created my wallet.js. <coughs> then we, one of the principle is to write sufficient code to make your test pass. And here I just write a very simple uh, code which is to just export the wallet which then has the wallet balance in SGD. Then, yeah, then you'll pass. Yeah, so this is typically how you write a TDD uh, workflow. Yeah, and, and if you look into here, there's, there isn't much uh, refactoring <laughs> right now. So, well, you can change it to arrow functions if you want. Yeah, so now it's testing the DOM components. So I test like uh, say if I were to write if I were to put the buttons right now then I test that the buttons actually exist within that wallet component so we write the test first we check that the balance dot text to equals to the wallet balance in um, yeah so I I, I so what this does is it finds the balance class and then it expects the balance class to have the text which is equals to wallet balance equals to SGD twenty dollars. Yeah. So it will fail, then it will complain, complain that uh, it can't find the node balance, which is obviously and then we write the code. So which is to so now I added this part, the class name equals the balance, because previously there wasn't any class. And then I changed this to props.balance, and then it will return me exactly this, wallet balance equals to SGD20. Yep, so now it passes, yeah. So this is the typical workflow. Actually, I think I can skip this. It becomes too repetitive, yeah. So the next thing that you want to know is also you want to test the state because a React component typically has a state. It keeps its own state. So here I write the code. Um, so before each, before this test runs, then I will, what I will do is I will find it's this class input wallet and then I simulate a change. So this one, if you, ref this one is, I'm actually writing the form. I'm actually writing this. So I expected that when I, when just simulate a change on it, then it will, what does it do? Yeah, when just simulate the change on it using the value user balance 25, then I should expect that the wallet state has the balance which is equals to this user balance passed in uh, this 25. Yeah. 
this pass integer is just meaning that uh, I pass it to an integer. So now it obviously will fail. Yep, so here I, I change it to, um, yeah, I added this line. So the input wallet class, and it takes in a type number. And this is the on change method, and it updates the balance, which then upset state of that wallet class. So whenever you put in, whenever you type in uh, uh, this, whenever you type in this 25, and then it will call this functions on change, which then upstate, which then set the state of the balance, and this balance will be equals to 25. So then, oh, then it will, the stamp shot will actually fail. So this is when snapshot becomes useful. Then it will ask you to, it will actually alert you that is this the change that you want? Then if this is the change that you want, then you press U to update the snapshot. If this is not, then obviously you will know what 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 is what um what what is the error here? And then if you don't want, then you just go back and change your code. Yeah. Then this will pass. So testing clicks is rather similar to simulating a change in a form. So how it does is it you uh, so here you get that button. So you shallow render your wallet, and then you find the button dot deposit, and then you simulate a click. So this is, you, you type before each such that it happens before this, um, this test. <clears throat> and here it says that I expect that the mock deposit, uh, I think the, the mock deposit is a jazz, uh, it's over here. Yeah, it's a jazz mocking function. So I expect that the mock deposit to have been caught with the, the the pass integer to be caught with this user balance. So this user balance is the 25 which I defined earlier. Yeah. I, I didn't uh, include it here because there was too much code. So it was quite difficult to find. So what did, yeah. So then, then I, I wrote the similar one for the button withdraw and I simulate the click. So um, yeah, then it, it so here you can see the error. It's actually quite useful because of this description that you have written. So when the user types into the wallet input, this is a BDD style already. BDD is a behavior driven development, which talks about when the user do something, what should happen, something like that. <coughs> so, they, so the error actually says expected the mock function to have been caught with 25, but it was not caught because I haven't returned the, the button and I haven't returned the function to then um, update the state. So this is the update here. So button class name with button dash deposit, then on click, then you will it will run this function, which is deposit. And then this is a this.props.deposit, which um, it comes from Redux. Um, I didn't show that part because uh, it's, it's a bit rapid. Uh, well, well, what it does is actually dispatch an action and then reduce it to add it to the Redux state, which is the balance, wallet balance. Uh, am I? Is everyone understanding? Okay, I, I assume it is. Okay, and then, and then it passed, yeah. Now this one is, um, a lot of people find it difficult to test the asynchronous calls. And uh, this one I just demonstrate how you can do it. <coughs> so this one is, uh, well, what I did here was to set up a, a mock store. And then because in, 
in Redux, typically uh, when you dispatch a function, uh, dispatch an action, you actually expect it to return an object. But Redux, uh, Redux tongue actually allows you to dispatch an action creator, actually, which is a function. Uh, this, this one I, I didn't show it here because yeah, I just wanted to show the TDD aspect of it. And this is the fetch mock, uh, fetch mock function. So what you do in fetch mock is you write the exact API for fetch mock to call. And then the mock response is what you want that API to return you with, which in the case is this BPI Bitcoin price index. So you expect that when you make an asynchronous action to fetch the Bitcoin value, it will return you which is equals to this expected action, which is this. Yep. And then you will complain that it doesn't have this uh, asynchronous action. This one is actually a Redux action I'm writing here. And then it passes, yeah. So this is a sh the, my, my sharing today. Uh, it's, it's essentially just um, describing how is the workflow of TDD, especially in React, and what are the tools that you can use. Yeah. Is there any question? Oh, then this is the code coverage. Then in TDD, because you write your code first before, I mean, you write your test first before you write your code, then obviously you have a lot of, uh, uh, a lot of very high code coverage. Then this uncovered lines, this is because of this, uh, the Redux connected function. Not connected function. Uh, which is this line. But because we test, make the test, the re over here, which then depends on the Redux connect function. So then yeah, it's, it's okay. If not, um, I'm actually not too sure how do you test that line. Yeah, and yeah, I, that's all. That's all for me today. So we do have time for questions. So if you wanna some questions, you can go ahead and do so. Yeah. What was your reason for using Redux over just lifting state? Uh, what was the reason for using Redux? Uh, there wasn't any particular reason for using Redux. Over here, I can just use a typical state. Yeah, so um, there wasn't a strong reason for using Redux over here. Yeah. But I think over here, what it can show you is uh, what is how, how can you mock a, a, a store and how can you mock an action? Yeah, that, that was the, probably the motivation in doing that. Yeah. Uh, when you do snapshot testing with JS, uh -huh. you ever among the compute components? I, th I think that depends on what you are actually doing. So JS actually has three APIs, right? Which is the um, mount, render, and shallow rendering. Is, th is that what you're asking? Sorry? Is that, isn't that the enzyme API? That is just API. That is not enzyme API. It yeah. Enzyme. It's just. Sh I think. Shallow, shallow mountain and one of yeah, the enzyme. I don't know if just has it, but enzyme definitely. Okay, okay. So your question is whether do you mount or you render or you, I think that depends on your use case, exactly what you're doing. If you are, I think if you are doing a, the, what's that called? Um, component did mount, then you actually need that, that entire component to mount. Uh, then you need to use the mount for, for your just name shot. Am I right? Yeah, yeah. It, it, I think it depends on what, what you are doing there. Yeah. Can you make an example of when do we use shallow rendering and when we use mount? So when you, your, your component requires you to make a call in component mount, then you need the full mount of the entire 
uh, life cycle component. But if you, let's say you just want to check that the class, uh, sorry, this class exists and this component exists, then you can just do it simply with shallow rendering. Yeah. For example, for that app just now, so because I make the API call to get the Bitcoin when it's the component is mounting, then that should actually require me to, to uh, mount that component instead of shallow rendering because I wouldn't be able to test the component did mount whether that was actually caught, right? So I would put a mock functions into that, uh, into that mount and then test that this mock function is tested when it's component did mount. Well, when yeah. you mount your child component, uh, how do you send the props to the child component? When I mount, then how do I test okay. the... When you use mount when doing uh -huh. some, some child component needs some props uh -huh. to be executed. I, I think it, that, that should be the same API, right? You, the component dot props. Actually, not, to, not, not very sure uh, of the exact answer right now, but I'm, I'm sure the documentation says it. Like it should, we can send props. You, you, you should be able to send props, yeah. 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 The, 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 I think the documentation will say you should be able to do that. Yes. Thanks. Can I ask a question? Uh, do you test uh, Redux? I mean, do you just actions, action creators? Ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so today what I, what I show is just React, but if you were to test uh, actions, you, it's, it's just a, a unit test. So when you call that function, then you expect the exact object to return, the type, and then the, the, the real data for it to return. Yeah. And then the same as uh, Redux. I mean, I mean read, uh, reducers. So you put, in, put into it mock objects, and you expect it to return what exactly you want. It's just a typical uh, unit test that you expect, yeah. So what, what I did here was to I write the actions test and I write the uh, reducers test first before I had those actions test. I mean, when I, uh, bef before I r write this components test, yeah, because this component is actually dependent on my Redux, right? Yeah. Okay, cool. Oh, yeah, yeah. So, uh, in your last, last example, the right, component was not like uh, Redux, the committer. Uh, I, I cannot hear you. Huh? Connect. Connect, uh-huh. Yeah, I mean, your component is uh, connected with Redux. Yes. Uh, what if you wanted to test that component with Redux? Oh, then you can actually just um, do a name as board, rather than you, so when, at your test, right, you just, import that wallet, uh, the name import, rather than you import that default component, right? Yeah. So you, you just import, do the name import, rather than... Uh, so you like, uh, export? Yes. Yes, correct. Yeah. Yeah. We just tried to use TDD for project, but it the test code implementation always become lower priority than, than feature yeah. development. Yeah. So in that case, how, how, do, you, how do we persuade I mean, clients or management <laughs> that the test code implementation is as important? Do you want to say that? <laughs> <laughs> because we cannot find the reason so far. Well, I guess, <laughs> I guess in the long run, if you have good test coverage, you actually move faster. So I guess from, from a business perspective, they're thinking about um, writing tests means you are slower and you wasted time. Mm. Uh, but you, you save time, so it's like the, the rabbit and the, and the tortoise problem, right? So you save time in the short run, uh, but in the long run, when you're trying to scale and when you're trying to um, you know, add more and more features over time, mm. what you're going to have is that your code base is going to be uh, untested and, and, and mm. messy and bulky and, and it's harder and harder to add more and more features into, especially if it's a large product. Yeah. So if it's a small, tiny product, that's still okay. But yeah. Eventually, if, if, if the business wants to think long term, then they should definitely factor in tests because yeah. you actually move a lot faster. 
So like you can deploy, and you can deploy very confidently. Like you can, in your CR, you can see that everything is passing, and then just push to production. If you don't have any tests, um, then when you push, you are you have no confidence that, that what you've just uh, created uh, mm. might break. Yeah. So so that's how we explain. I, I feel it's especially true for consultancy because in consultancy what, what you do is you, you, write the pro, you write your code already and then you finish the project and you leave. Then who is to maintain that, that code? It's the client themselves. So then the client probably they're not sure of what are the features, how you write your code and then they make any changes then when they click save and they will exactly know what is, which, part of the com, which part of the application is actually failing because of the test then you will, uh, it allows them to easily debug and, and refactor. Yeah, I, f I, feel, I, f I feel in consultancy it's especially more uh, valid point for you to do TDD. Why don't we just test in production? <laughs> test in production? So you, <laughs> right. Yeah. Get users to complain and tell us, oh, it broke. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's like how SMRT does. <laughs> but you know that we're being recorded. <laughs> but then one got no chance for you to refactor. <laughs> okay, cool. Thanks. Thank you. Well. So next speaker,